Welcome to episode two of my game mechanic series for Distant Worlds 2. Today, we're going to be talking about scanners, sensors, jammers, and stealth. I'm going to spend most of my time actually on scanners and sensors, and I'm going to do a quick stealth demo. So the first thing I want to do is talk about where these things go in the design screen, right? So if I go to my design screen here and I uh, create a new ship, and I'll do a completely blank one, completely empty one here. Okay, so as you know, the weapons go in the red section here. The uh, shields and armor go in the blue section here. So this green section is where we're going to put sensors and scanners. Early game, right? This is a late mid-game sh mid game, uh, ship here. Early game, you're only going to have one or two slots here. And early game, too, you're going to have precious space. In fact, let's let's go out and do that. So let's add maybe a destroyer, even a yeah an early destroyer. Okay, so you can see here, I've only got two slots. So what we pick is really, really important, okay? And the three that we're going to talk about right now are the trace scanner. All right, and I'm going to put one in there just to show you. All right, and the trace scanner um, helps with targeting and with weapons damage increase. This is a tier four version I'm looking at, trace scanner version two. There's a higher and lower version. The higher version has a different name. Uh, but this, if you if you do research, and I do recommend researching along this path, you can get these trace scanners, which are great. They can see ships halfway across the system, as we'll see in our little experiments in a few minutes. Um, and they add weapon damage increase and targeting, which is really good, right? Targeting is to hit, and weapon damage increase, of course, is extra damage. So I love these guys. They take up only five space. They're really great. And as I'll show you during the rest of the... Um, experiments here, I think in many, many cases it can replace the short range sensor, All right? The second one is the short range sensor here. We're going to put that in also. You could run, uh, sorry, I hit the wrong one. You could run both of these, by the way, in the same ship. I wouldn't recommend it. It does take up five. The early version of this, when you, when you first start off, is called the proximity sensor. You can see that here on the chart. Uh, that one, it takes up a space of 10. So you quickly, quickly want to get past that tech if you're going to use short range sensors and save some space. All right, but you don't really need both of these in as I'm gonna show you and we'll talk about more at the end after we do all of our experiments. The one big advantage here for short range sensors is it can see, generally speaking, almost all the way across the system and it has jump tracking so you can watch ships leave and come in before they actually arrive, right? You can watch them leave, see where they're jumping to and you can see them coming in from another system and get a little early warning. Whereas with a trace scanner, that's not gonna happen. And then the last one is the long range scanner. There's a bunch of them here. I'm just picking a tier five version here, which is the uh, version two. Uh, and I put it here. Now that's 70, right? It takes up 70 space. So we really, really don't wanna put these on destroyers or small ships. Cause I haven't, you know, this ship, I haven't put anything else in. Of course, I just left everything blank. So we really, really don't want these in long range destroyers. They do work well on explorer ships, particularly after you've explored most of the galaxy and you want to just keep an eye on your enemy. So I recommend these are great for explorers and then plopping the explorers down in various places to on the perimeter or beyond the perimeter or near your enemy's home colonies so you can see what's going on and they can look through the system. They can look through multiple systems and give you a, a wide view of everything around you. Now, one of the things to do when we're in the main game here is to make sure you have this long range sensors on, right? So I have a ship in this system here. You can see I'm turning it on and off. I have a ship here with a long range sensor. And as I turn it on and off, you can see, I can see everything else around the system. I don't have to be parked in the system. I can be parked over here and then watch all of these systems within its range. Okay, so if I plopped a bunch, here's my empire over here. So if I plopped, now you can see these are my sensor ranges from, most likely from bases, right? From bases here. I'll turn them on and off so you can see it kind of, right? So I can see everything here, but I may want to extend this over to here, right? Or through this gap here in the nebula. So uh, I might put one here. I might put one by these independents. I might put some over here. Now I don't have anybody really close to me right now but I want, might want to put one near one of my enemies uh, along here. So you can put these ships with long range sensors and they'll, they'll make these little blobs and you can have them overlapping and easily cover a lot of space. So that's a great use of long range sensors. I just don't recommend them on combat ships. The only time I will use them is if I have a big fleet and I have mid to late game where I have carriers or battleships and I may put them on the carrier, for example, 
but not on all my other ships. So I'll reserve all my other ships for uh, combat purposes and use that valuable 70 space for more shields or more weapons. All right, so what we're going to do first is talk about this chart a little bit. So you can see here, I'm going to highlight a couple of things. You can see here that the trace scanners offer this plus to targeting and weapons damage, which is why I love them so much. And for me, they replace the short range sensors uh, early to mid game, particularly for my smaller ships. The range here tells you how far they can see, but really these numbers without any guide on the uh, galaxy view, it's really hard to see what numbers do, but you can basically think that about a million reaches across a uh, one solar system, one star system. So the trace sensors, we're going to take a look and with our experiment and see how far they can see across a system uh, before we worry about these ranges and things. Now, the difference here between scanning and trace scanning, the, the book says there's a difference, the Galactopedia says there's a difference. I haven't really noticed a difference at all. I noticed that Scanning can do what trace scanning can do and trace scanning can do what scanning can do. So I don't see any big advantage here. If you have some ideas about this, put in the in the comments. I know what it says it will do, right? So it says that trace scanners will look at the uh, cargo and the troops and the component status, but I've found that regular scanning uh, allows you to do the same thing. Right at this top line here, regular scanning allows you to do the same thing. So, I, and you'll see it in my experiments. I haven't seen any difference here. The other thing I just want to talk about is jump tracking here. So. Uh, the one thing that short range sensors and long range sensors have over the, everybody else is that they can see ships coming and going, as I mentioned earlier. And then last, we're going to talk at the very end of the video, we're going to talk about stealth and trace jammers. Now the trace jammers will make it harder for you to see. So all the things that I was looking at earlier, and I will look at in my experiments, if the enemy bases or ships have trace jammers, which I haven't seen a lot of, but if they did have them, that would reduce what I could see or how far away before it starts becoming a gray blob. And I'll demonstrate that in a short time. The stealth is really powerful if you have a high enough stealth. So this power, the stealth power here has to overtake their sensor status, right? Their sensor power. So if your power is much higher than their sensor power here, then you can hide from the enemy ships. In fact, I'll show you during the demo, you can actually walk right up to an enemy base and have a huge surprise advantage. So we'll talk about that later in the video. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to test out these trace scanners, run a little experiment. I'll repeat that for short and long range, then we'll come back and talk about sensors. And then in the final, final part of the video, I'm going to just do a quick stealth demo for you to show you how powerful that is. So for testing purposes, we're going to use the uh, trace scanner, the short range sensors and the long range sensors. We're going to see what kind of difference those three different components for sensors and scanners make when we're looking uh, in a system. So this will be a very local area. So I'm going to, this is an enemy system that I actually haven't discovered. So I've manually placed my ships in their system. I picked up this system because it's very big. So if we zoom in, you'll see it's pretty wide across. So this is Maybe worst case scenario, there may be a wider one, but I mean, I've certainly uh, seen smaller systems in games. So this is what I would consider to be kind of a worst case scenario as far as how far across a particular star system you have to scan. So what I've done here in blue is I've placed uh, the same identical ship with a trace scanner. Now this is version two, as I showed on the, uh, the chart, which I'll put back up here. Uh, it's a uh, tier four trace scanner. And I'm going to compare that to a tier four short range scanner and a tier five long range scanner. So all early mid game uh, type technologies here. And I placed one at different distances to show you, and I'm going to eliminate, I'm going to delete one from the inner, you know, the innermost to the outermost one at a time to see when we can't see something. So right now, <clears throat> this trace scanner on this ship at the star can see all the way across the full radius of the system. So there's a destroyer. The only thing it can't see is the mission here, but that's true for um, all of the ships. You have to be really, really close, regardless of your scanning power or scanning range. You have to be pretty close to the ship. I'm not going to show this. You can try it on your own, but you've got to be like within, certainly within this gap that I'm showing you here in order to see the mission, okay? And it doesn't seem to matter from what I can tell which type of scanner or sensor technology you have. But anyway, back to this, uh, the range within a system. So this scanner, let's take a look at what I'm looking at just to confirm here. You can see it's a trace scanner, it's version two. It's got a zero scan range, right? That sounds like it's not gonna be able to see anything. And a trace scan range of 250,000. 
<clears throat> so I think, you know, my guess would have been that 1 million here would be across a system because I think that's what the skip drive is. It allows you to go 1 million. Um, but I'm not really sure what the actual ranges are, but it, this seems like it'd be very, very short, right? And it seems like it won't reach all the way across a system. And with the scanning power of zero, I'm also thinking, well, how does that affect anything? So right now, halfway across the system, I can see everything I want to see about this enemy destroyer here on the very edge of the system. So I can see its components. If I click here, you'll see I can see all its components and what its weapons do. I can see its strength here, 399. So I know if I'm capable of defeating it or not, roughly. <clears throat> I can see its hull and components. It doesn't have any cargo, so I can't tell if I can see the cargo or not. But I, I believe you can because if I come over here, which is not much further away on the spaceport, I can see what its resources are, right? So you can see that. I can see these other ships, the shipyard here. Again, I can't see what it's building or I can't see its mission because I'm not that close, but everything else I can see. I can see the planet. I can see the troops on the planet, okay? And all this is not at maximum uh, range here, but it's a, you know, it's a good portion across this uh, system here. So, so far, so good. So I'm going to go in the editor. I'm going to delete this ship here. And here's my, you know, the first ship that I showed you. So I'm going to go in the editor and I'm going to delete this ship and let's see what happens. And it does update in real time, by the way. The long range scanners for seeing outside of the system don't update immediately, but this will, and I'll show you in a second. So I'm deleted the ship. Okay. So now our closest ship is here which is beyond the full radius, right? It's, it's a little beyond the radius, so it's beyond the center here. And uh, I want to see what I can see. So now I can't see this ship, all right? So that little bit of distance there from the center here to the second orbit here, I now can see that there's a ship there, but I don't know what it is. I, I can't click on it, or I guess I can click on it, but nothing shows up. I can see that it's part of the Burning Council. So that is the one piece of information I get other than that there's a ship there. So there's a ship there and it's a pirate ship. That's all I know. Even if I zoom in here, let's see what happens. I can't see these ships either. And they were, you know, a good distance closer, right? They were, in fact, they're closer than the distance, I believe, that I changed from, right? I only went from here to here and now suddenly I can't see them. So that's a little strange. Like, in other words, it's not, doesn't seem to be based on range anymore because that range is probably the same uh, or or less than this range from here to here, from the star to here to here. So not sure what's going on there, but you can see as I back off, uh, I, I can see the spaceport fine because it's it's large. All right. I can see everything about the spaceport. I can see uh, I can see the, the colony, but I can't see the troops anymore. That's gone. I can see facilities, but I can't see the troops. I can't see the resources. I can see the bonuses, but not the resources. And I can't see these ships. So already... The trace scanner is uh, starting to reduce its ability to see all the way across the uh, star system. I, does the star have something to do with that? I don't know. All right, I'm going to delete this one now. Let's see what happens now. Go back to my editor. Oops, didn't work. There it goes. Okay. Come out of the editor, pause the game, and zoom out. Okay, so now my closest ship is three orbits. Now, they're not equal in... in uh, in radius here, but it's three orbits out. So it's, it's, you know, halfway across the other side of the solar system, roughly a little less than halfway. So now I don't even know the pirate ship is there. I don't see anything. It's still there, but I can't see it. Uh, I can see the colony, no new information on there. I can still see everything I could see before, but I can't see the resource and things. I can see the star base spaceport, but there are no ships. I can't see they are there, but I can't see them. Okay. So I half, it's not going to work well you know, past halfway across here. And if I delete this one further, I don't know. I don't think there's going to be any change, but let's try it anyway. Still can't see anything where the pirate ship is. I can still see the star base okay. And I can see the colony. I can still see everything I can see before from the colony. All right, so... The big things don't seem to be affected by my distance here in that I can still see that they exist, but that's about it. I don't see any ships, none of the blue ships that were there. Let's delete this one and go all the way across. Back to the editor. Get rid of that ship and then close the editor. Okay, pause the game. And let's see now. 
No difference. I can't see the ships, of course, and expect to. I can still see the star spaceport, and I can still see everything uh, in the colony that I could see in the last little test. So I come all the way across the solar system here, and I can see basically the same thing as if I was on the first rate of the uh, yeah the first radius here. Nothing much has changed. Okay, or no, I guess from the yeah third radius here, third orbit. So um, there it is. Now. If you're coming into the system and your ships all are equipped with trace scanners and you jump to this side of the system, you're really not going to have any problems. You're going to be able to shoot just fine. You're going to be able to see everything that's going on. You, Like I said, the mission is the only thing we couldn't see earlier, and that's true for the other scanners too. So I think for the trace scanner, everything's pretty good. As long as you're on the right side of the system with where all the action is, you're fine. You just can't see what's going on on the far side of the system. And that's a pretty big system too. Now, if your fleets are defending at home, this is not an issue because your home base, your home starport, uh, your home colony, your other ships, your explorer ships, or whatever else you have in your system will see the enemy on the far side and you can route to that enemy, send your ships this way. And again, I'm really kind of testing this based on manual fleets, right? When I'm when I'm making an attack in a far-flung star system. For automatic fleets, I do want to put some kind of sensors on them, maybe a short-range sensor, so they can react better and see what's going on. But if they're defending a particular colony, so if this was my colony and all I wanted to do was put a defense fleet here that would pretty much protect this and not jump off to the far side of the system, well, I wouldn't really care about any other uh, sensors other than the trace scanners. And the trace scanners are great because, as you know, from as I mentioned earlier, they do add to targeting and weapons damage. So they really can replace, for the most part, particularly a version 2, which is tier 4, trace scanner can pretty much, for me, replace sensors on most of my ships. All right, let's take a look at the short-range scanner. So I've got a new ship here. It's a cruiser with uh, same ship with everything's the same, except I replaced... The uh, trace scanner with a short range scanner. This is a tier four version two short range scanner. Uh, it says it has a range of three million, which is well within this, uh, well outside of the system, I believe. And the uh, trace scanner is three hundred seventy five thousand, which I think is very far across the system. So. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't see a difference. It's not like uh, I see a difference in the sensors versus the scanners. Everything is reading everything else. So let's take a look at what I mean. So right now I'm on all the way across the system with a short range sensor and I can click on the destroyer on the far side here, the pirate destroyer, and I can see all the components, right? So you might have thought based on the uh, Galactopedia and the chart I put together that there's going to be a difference in what they can see, like he can see... He can't see cargo or things like that. But if you zoom in over here back to the colony on the far side of the, on the, far side of the system here, I can see uh, what the resources are. No problem here. I can see uh, the design. I can see everything. If I click on the colony, I can see the troops. So again, I don't see any advantage here versus one versus the other uh, as far as what you can see. Right, I can see all the ships here. So he's on the far side. All the ships are fine. I can see their designs. There's nothing I can't see. So the short range scanner, uh, at least at this tier four, <clears throat> which isn't too far ahead in technology, can see all the way across the system. So I, I had other ones here, but I didn't bother showing you because obviously if he can see it, anybody closer can see it. So he can see straight across the entire system. Now, what I didn't show you earlier with the trace scanner is the minute this pirate ship takes off, I will not be able to see where he's going or to, to watch him leave the system. So that's what the short range sensors and the long range sensors give you is a uh, the stat right over here, this 15% in this case for this particular model, uh, jump tracing, right? So he's going to be able to follow the ship for a while. So let's let that run. <clears throat> I'm going to speed it up for a few seconds. And then watch as the pirate chimp jumps out of the uh, system here. You won't be able to see it for too long, but you will be able to see it. You also see, see it says jumping here in the bottom. Let me slow it down. Okay, there he goes. Now, as soon as he jumps, you can't see anything about the ship. Now it's an unknown chimp. So this is a limitation of the short range scanner compared to the long range scanner. So we'll check this out with the long range scanner in a second. I just want it to disappear. So you can see it leaving the system. I don't know what it is anymore now that it's in transit uh, for the jump. Again, with my short range scanner and it's going to disappear pretty pretty quickly let it run a little faster 
and then you'll see it kind of fade out. I don't want it to totally disappear. Let's see. Okay, there it goes. My short range scanner. All right, it just stopped. So let me pause the game. So it's somewhere over here. It's left my jump range of the short range scanner, tier four version two. Uh, now, just what just to again add one other weakness of the trace scanner. I wouldn't even see where that ship went. I wouldn't see its direction it went. It would just disappear off my um, sensor. So the uh, short range scanner does give you the benefit here of seeing the ship leave and the direction it's going in for a short time. Now, what I'm going to do is replace this. So I'm going to go back to my editor, replace this <clears throat> with long range scanner. Now, the long range scanner, we don't need to really test in the system because if this thing can see everything, and I've tried it on my own, the long range scanner can see exactly what this short range sensor ship can do. But it can now, in addition, of course, see uh, outside of the system and it can tr uh, jump track that ship, the pirate ship, much, much better. So that's what you're going to see a difference here. So I'm going to take long range scanner sensor version two, which is uh, tier five, just one tier beyond that short range. I'm going to plop it here. All right. I'm going to pause the game for a second, zoom out. All right. So now there it is. You can now see the pirate ship again. And not only can you see the ship, but you can see what type it is. So this is because the long range uh, sensors have a much greater range, right? On this tier five, it's 150, uh, sorry, it's 60 million. So that's well beyond the system. That's into another system actually. And it's got a 35% jump tracking. So I'll be able to follow the ship a lot longer, right? In fact, if I zoom out, that should be, I believe, my range of my ship. All right. So when I click here, I can see that's the range of my long range sensor. See, it goes right into another system here. So I'll actually be able to see in this system, other ships and, and star ports and everything else. And we'll take a look at that in a little bit. If this empire has some ships over here, I'll be able to see that where the short range sensors would not pick that up. And certainly the trace uh, scanners would not pick it up either, but let's watch this go. So I'm going to let the, let it run. You can still see I'm looking at a destroyer. I can see the nation here. See, it's a pirate. Let's let it run it four times. Okay. So long range sensors are going to allow me to see this for a much longer period of time. And of course it will allow me, oops, my ship moved. I didn't want that to happen. So let me move back here. It will allow me also to um, see them coming in, right? So I'll know if an enemy fleet is coming in to this system. Now, of course, if I'm in my home system or any of my colonies, or I have a monitoring station or any other base there that has uh, long range sensors, it'll see it too. So I don't really need it on my ships, but here, when I'm way far away from my home and I'm maybe invading and I want to see if there's enemy ships coming in to reinforce the enemy colony, I won't see that without a long range sensor, right? I will see it very quickly and a short range sensor will get a tiny, tiny bit of warning, but the long range sensors are going to help me see that. So that's what I want to do when I have a big fleet mid to late game. Uh, if I have carriers, I might equip my carriers with my long range sensors and then the battleships, battle cruisers, cruisers, destroyers, I would not waste the space, right? Because it takes up, you can see here about 60, actually 70 at tier five. It takes up 70. Okay, so the ship is still going here. I can still see its type, but it will start to, there it goes. Okay, so now it's switched over to an unknown ship. I can still see it's a pirate ship, but it's an unknown ship because it's getting near the edge of my long range scanners here. Right, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. You can see what that scale looks like. But I can still see there's a ship here. So I would still see a fleet coming in. But at this range, the power is dropping off. And as soon as it gets outside that circle, I'm susp I am suspect it's going to uh, disappear completely. So let's see what happens. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Okay, and then it's gone. So you can see when I have this selected, my long range scanners on, then I can see... Uh, the maximum range that I'll be able to see ships. And so I'm, I know I'm pretty much safe here. If I was attacking this empire, I know I'm pretty safe here that if something's coming in to reinforce them, I'll know it as soon as it crosses this boundary here. So again, long range sensors, very useful when you're not home, when you're not in your own systems and you're in an enemy system attacking and you want to know when reinforcements are coming, but you don't need it in every ship, right? You just need it in one ship or one type of ship. Okay, so one more thing about long range sensors, right? So if I select my ship here uh, with long range sensor version two, tier five, uh, a couple things I wanna talk about. So halfway through my maximum radius here, I can see ships, right, in other systems, no problem, right? I can see everything about them, even their design. 
I can see everything I want within, you know, maybe, I don't know, four or five of these circles here. I'm not sure about right there, but that's near the edge. Here I can too, okay? And uh, yeah, there it is, I can click on it. So that's pretty far away, I can even see its cargo. So again, that's not really something that trace scanners uh, can only do. I can see the cargo from all the way over here. Uh, and in this system, because I've actually been here before, I can see what the planets look like. I don't know anything about them. I haven't scanned them with a scout ship. I don't, I can see, physically see their pictures. Now that's pretty far away, right? It's on the, you know, two thirds of the way near the edge there. Now over here, which is even closer, I can see the ship detail, no problem. But if I actually zoom into the system, I can't see anything about the planets because I haven't been to the system. So long range scanners don't expose it exposes the orbit and the fact that there's a planet there, but it doesn't expose the details or even the picture of what type of planet it is. That's not to do with the range of the scanner so much as just that you haven't been there. See, also over here, if I zoom in, um, I can see there's an unknown ship. So I'm, at, I'm past that range where I can't determine where I can see the ship and I can't determine what it is anymore. But I, again, I can't see the planets because I've never been here, even though I can see their orbits. And yeah, see, this is near the last ring. So unknown ship, unknown ship. But here I can see what exactly what ship it is, right? So as we mentioned earlier, when you were watching the jump, when you get to these last two or three rings, we start to lose uh, the ability to understand or see what the details of the ship are other than that it's a ship. Okay, so that's long range scanners. Just to give you, a, uh, you know, this is a pretty big galaxy. I think this is a thousand star galaxy, 10 by 10. Uh, but that, that long range scanner can see pretty far. So that's what a 60 million range looks like. They go up as high as double that for the ultra. So you could have, imagine if you had the ultra, which is very late game, you could see this far in every direction. All right, so finally, let's talk about stealth. So there are two uh, components that we're gonna talk about here, jammers and stealth. So the jammers actually reduce the trace scanning ability of your enemy's sensors. So that means it could mask your uh, cargo, you could mask your components and, and potentially your strength. I'll be honest, I haven't really seen this on the other end, but it's very hard to test because the AI doesn't like to use stealth. But in theory, that's what it would do. The, the stealth components themselves, they reduce the sensor range and well, technically the power. And then of course that reduces the range that they can see you. So the benefit of the stealth component is that it will reduce the range that the enemy will see you coming as you're warping towards their system. That will reduce their reaction time for sending a reinforcement fleet from another system perhaps to come and, and uh, defend their uh, system that you're invading. Now, in addition, of course, they offer also countermeasures. So even if you don't use the stealth side, or if you, and I'm going to talk about how valuable or not valuable stealth is, uh, at least it does add this countermeasure ability, which reduces weapon to hit, right? Weapons to hit stat. So they both offer that benefit. In addition, they both offer or they both reduce the range that their sensors can determine that is your empire and what kind of role your ship is. So is it a combat ship or a, a, a freighter? So that also helps reduce their ability to react. And both of them contribute to that and that stacks as well. So if you use both, you'll greatly reduce that uh, ability. But I'm gonna first talk about how the stealth component reduces sensors. So let's first of all, take a look, uh, this blue system. Let's say I'm gonna invade this blue system here, which actually is my system, but because I can't show their sensors, we're gonna use my system here. So. If I turn sensors, long range uh, scanners, they call them scanners, but technically this is the sensor part of it. On and off, you'll see that white and there's also a dashed line on the outside. That is the range from this system and it's coming from the uh, spaceport in that system. That is the range that the spaceport's ultra long range scanners, uh, it's the ultra version two tier eight scanner. So it's the next to highest long range scanner that they have. That's the, le the, the maximum range that is going to at least see something is heading towards it. And then as I talked about earlier, about 20% or 30% in from that, it's going to be able to tell exactly what the ship is, right? It's going to be able to see its role. It's going to be able to see its combat strength and everything else. 
So what Stealth does is it reduces this effective range for all three of those things, for both, you know, what whether a ship's coming or not, which empire it comes in from, and of course its role. So uh, let me put up the stats here. So if you look at this chart here, you're going to see, I'm, so I'm using here a tier eight ultra long range sensor, which has a scanning power of 170 and it has a range of hundred million. So that circle that we just looked at outside of my spaceport, so it has a range of hundred million. The stealth component that I have in uh, one of the ships that I have that, that potentially would be invading this has a stealth rating of 100. So I take the scan power of the sensor and I take the stealth rating and I subtract the two and that tells me the net, in this case 70, the net power out of the original 170 power. So the power has dropped from 170 down to 70. What does that do? That reduces the effective range. So that's 41.2% approximately. And so my new max range is only 42%, sorry, 41.2% of the 100 million, which is now down to 40 million. So again, that's about 40%, right? So if you look here, I'll try to, I'll put a little graphic up here. You'll see that this circle will reduce by a little more than half. And that will give you uh, more time before they're able to react, right? So you'll you'll be closer to their system before they react. Now, if the stealth rating is higher than the scan rating, and this is a little, uh, the scan power. So if the stealth rating is, for example, 100, but the stealth, the scan power was only 75, for example, then in theory, not only can you get into the system without them being able to react, but you would theoretically remain unseen until you move within range of the spaceport. And what I mean by range is like, you know, you're around the same planet or the same moon, you know, roughly just shy of weapons range. That's the theory. It sometimes seems to work. I'll show you an example. And it sometimes doesn't work or doesn't seem to work. So ultimately, the real advantage here is that they have less time to react. Now, the question is, is that worth a size of 40, right? That's the big question. Is it worth a size of 40? So, you know, for me, it's not because for tier eight, you have to, it takes a long time to get to tier eight. The sensors get more powerful early on compared to the stealth component. So to have a stealth component that is bigger than the scan power of a sensor, you need to be two or three tiers higher. So for me, that's not worth the 40 uh, size. And again, by the time you're at tier eight, you've probably won the game anyway. So this isn't going to really affect early game. So I'm not a big fan of the trade-offs that come with these stealth components. Okay. A couple other things I want to mention about stealth. I'll put them up here as I say them because they're really important. Number one, doesn't matter what your stealth rating is. When you get within range, what I mean by range is when you get within the same moon or planet, you're within weapons range, all stealth ships are visible to the enemy. Number two, if you're a little beyond that, again, this would have to be a case where the stealth rating is higher, significantly higher than the scan power. And in theory, they couldn't see you within the system. If you start firing on one of their uh, mining bases on the other side of the system, they will see you and they can then react. To you. The third one is the smaller the hull size, the better stealth you have. So there's a basically... I think around, and I don't know this exact number, but somewhere around destroyer size, it's break even. And I think, and maybe a small cruiser, but as soon as you get to the big cruisers, the improved cruisers and battle cruisers, carriers, they will have a penalty on stealth. I don't know what that factor is, but basically you want to be stealthing mostly with light cruisers and uh, destroyers or below. And again, actually below destroyer, you're not going to have much hull size to be able to fit this 40 size Component. So again, I don't see the value that much in stealth. They're certainly not outweighing me putting another weapon on there. Okay, so let me show you a couple more things about stealth. So where do these components go? So if we open up our design screen here. So what happens is the um, stealth components are blue. So they're going to take a shield armor slot, right? So um, here is my... Uh, iSpace stealth sheath. I would put that here and that's going to reduce 
So this particular destroyer has four slots for armor, right? So I might put an armor in here and I might put a shield in here. So it's going to take one of my four slots for uh, that I would normally use for armor and shield, okay? The trace jammer is a scanning component. So this jammer here, okay, which would also, which would reduce the trace scanners would take up a scanner slot. And that's uh, only a size of five. So if you do get to this technology, the 10% countermeasures may be worth it, particularly if you have multiple, uh, more than two slots here for scanners. So maybe three or four slots, then that might be worth it for five is not a huge size, particularly on a bigger ship. So a 10% countermeasure, yeah, that may be worth it. And you get a little bit of scanning, jamming, which may or may not, you know, reduce their ability to react. So that component might be worth it. So they go in the scanner slot. The stealth component goes in the shield and armor slot. Again, both the size that it takes up and the fact that I lose one of these slots for shields and armor, I don't find that it's worth it. Uh, one more comment on stealth is in theory, and this was only a comment made on the forum, so I don't know what the stats are on this, but in theory, the trace scanners are better in system. Of course, trace scanners don't usually extend outside of the system itself, but in system, the trace scanners are considered more power and they're considered to be better at spotting stealth ships in a system. So it could be, and this may be some of the discrepancies that I see also, that even though your stealth rating is higher than the scan power of the sensors, it may be that the trace scanners are allowing the base or the other ships to see you in system. So it's very, very iffy if in system you're going to get any benefit at all. It's really the main benefit for stealth. When you're arriving at a uh, system that you're invading, they will have much less time to react. They'll be a little more surprised and there won't be reinforcement fleets coming as fast as they might have. Okay, quick two minute summary. So when it comes to sensors and scanners, I'm gonna recommend, as I did earlier, the trace scanner, uh, early game. So as soon as you're ready to start building combat ships, uh, frigates, destroyers, I'm gonna go recommend going for the trace scanner. Um, it has some shortfalls in that it um, cannot do jump tracking and it can't see on the far side of the system, but the uh, targeting and weapons damage increase in the very small size an early tier, tier two here, and then eventually getting to tier four and tier five, totally worth it. I will still research short range sensors and long range sensors after I research the uh, trace scanner, but I'm gonna leave these for my bases. Uh, and when I'm mid game, maybe my battle cruisers or carriers will have a long range sensor, but most of my other ships, all my other ship classes or ship hulls will have um, the trace scanner. And I'm not gonna really be using the short scanners on my ships. Finally, with stealth, as we mentioned, I don't find that the 40 is worth it. I will probably research down this path a little bit so I can get the Espionage Academy uh, for my counter espionage bonus. But I'm not going to be following the stealth path down. I'm not going to be using the stealth components. The trade-off is just not worth it to me. So that's it. That's my quick summary. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments. Again, uh, there are some gray areas here. The devs have also talked about taking a second look at this post-release and post, uh, you know, bug fixes and everything. So it could change and that'd be worth a second look. Um, and I'd love to hear from you guys what your experiences are. Maybe I can learn some things uh, from some back and forth. Don't forget to download my guide. All the charts uh, from this video are in the guide. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. So when my next uh, episode comes out, you'll be alerted about that. And uh, good hunting, everybody.